We've played and completed Cyberpunk 2077 and now Phantom Liberty, the new expansion, so here are 16 things that we wish we knew earlier that would have made our playthrough infinitely better. First up is the dynamic events. Phantom Liberty actually adds two new types of dynamic events into the game, which can randomly spawn around you as you're going around and doing missions. It's easy to zip past them if you're already focused on doing your current mission, but the airdrop event, which drops a hackable package that's usually surrounded by a bunch of enemies, is actually super rewarding. Completing these can net you with things like tier 5 weapons, money, mods, cyberware, and XP shards. The rewards aren't just limited to the drop itself, as the enemies in the area also also have a chance to drop some pretty awesome loot, so we highly recommend doing these airdrop events every time they pop up. Just look out for the red smoke going into the sky and a loud siren warning when you get near them. Next is a way to get a very powerful tier 5 iconic weapon near the start of the expansion, and it's very easy to miss out on if you don't go back to this location. Play through the story until you get your own apartment in Dogtown, and after you complete there for the first time, do a couple of missions and then return back, or pass some time. When you go back in, you'll find this iconic weapon located here on the wall. There are various other goodies littered around the apartment, so it's definitely worth coming back here to check them out. Something that we really wish we remembered earlier as a returning player to Cyberpunk is that you can of course access your stash from the trunk of your car to quickly deposit items so you don't get over encumbered. Remember you can call your car anywhere to you anytime you're outside doing missions. This is done by using the request button displayed in your UI. If you're wanting to know what your current carry capacity is, you can see it in the inventory menu, and you can actually find items that will increase your carry capacity by completing those airdrops we mentioned earlier. But if you're having inventory issues, call your car and dump all your stuff in the trunk. For this next one, whether you're new or returning, you need to know there are several changes to how builds work in the 2.0 update and Phantom Liberty expansion, meaning you will probably need some new gear, and if you want to become truly powerful, there's an easy way. Phantom Liberty adds a whole new area called Dogtown, and once you get far enough, you'll be able to access vendors like the Weapon Shops and Ripper Docks. These vendors have a great supply of some very high-end tier 5 equipment that you will find in the game. There are lots of vendors around the map, however there's two notable places within Dogtown that have a selection of vendors for you to check out. Next up is one that we really wish we knew at the very beginning of the expansion. It gets quite confusing quickly to know which quests are from the base game and which are the new quests in Phantom Liberty. Well, there's actually a very easy way to tell. If you open up your journal, any quest labeled with the little Phantom Liberty background next to it are basically exclusive quests to this new DLC. This helped us massively when trying to figure out which side quests we should be doing for this new expansion and to get those cool new iconic weapons and gear that comes with the expansion. As mentioned earlier, Earlier though, the skill tree for Cyberpunk has been completely reworked with the update 2.0 patch. Well, CD Projekt Red were kind enough to allow us to have a complete ability respec, including for our attribute points. But something we didn't realize is that you're only able to do this one singular time. Don't be like us and respec to some random build thinking we could do this however many times we wanted, because once you use that single respec, the button disappears and you can't do it again. Next up is to do with relic points. In Phantom Liberty, they've added a whole new section of the skill tree called the Relic Skills. These add a powerful new layer of gameplay and enhance particular playstyles such as the Mantis Blades being able to leap over vast distances towards enemies. You will be given some points at the start of the expansion for free, but you will then need to find more of them out in the open world within the Dogtown area. You can find these by looking for these little yellow machines. There will be an icon on the map for them once you're nearby, and you can listen out for these sounds too. You can also usually find one at the end of a criminal activity within the Dogtown area. And next up, you're going to want to know that certain missions require you to wait a day or some time until the next objective will update and allow you to progress towards the end. The game points you towards doing side missions or open world activities in the meantime. But if you want to go straight into the next mission, you can actually do a wait and skip up to 24 hours by using the skip time option in the menu, and you can do this anywhere. This will usually progress the objective to update so you can then go on to do the mission you want. It's worth knowing if this doesn't work the very first time you do it, you can skip a few more days ahead and it should work. This next one's more of a reminder for any returning players. Something you're going to want to do is fast travel, and unlike the skip time option that can be done anywhere just by opening up your menu, to fast travel you will actually have to go up to these set locations to then be able to fast travel to another one. Another thing to know is that progression has really changed in the 2.0 update. You can earn additional benefits by using your specific different playstyles. For example, with us using blades against enemies, we're leveling up our shinobi skill, which grants us additional 
additional perk points and XP, but in addition to leveling it up by doing activities related to that skill, you can also find shards on enemies and in containers as you play. A great source of them is the airdrops, which is one of the reasons why we always love doing this event as it's super useful, but there's another great source of them which leads us to our next point. The junk shop vendors have a variety of stat and XP shards available for relatively cheap, and you can pick them up early if you want a quick boost to your power. You can find them here on the map. This next one is just a subtle tip for something that you should keep in mind. While you explore, keep your eye out for the random iconic weapons and cyberware that are basically littered around Dogtown. The developers have been pretty sneaky and hidden them in some very weird places around corners or behind objects, so if you do like to explore, you will likely find some cool iconic weapons. But if you're looking to explore the map very quickly to find some of these extra goodies and rare items, there's a very useful movement tech that you can do if you have the upgraded air dash from the reflex skill tree and the double jump leg cyberware. What you want to do is alternate between air dashing and jumping. This will give you additional momentum to go into the air and then propel you forwards very quickly, allowing you to cover ground very easily, and it means you can travel kind of as fast as a vehicle can, except this works in areas that are not accessible to them. So dash, jump, dash, jump, and repeat this cycle. This next point is one to remember and it's critical to your builds if you want to succeed. The developers always put out really cool trailers for the different builds, but there are some essential components that you need which we didn't initially remember how you got them. If you want to use the optical camo, mono wire, gorilla arms, or mantis blades, you'll need to visit a ripper dock as they will sell different components such as the mantis blades or the optical camo, which also come in different rarities and different costs your cyberware cap. So make sure to visit different ripper docks to find the items you're looking for. And remember the optical camo skill in the relic skill tree will require that you have this cyberware equipped. Something that we suggest you do for any RPG including this one is to make sure to make multiple save files rather than overwriting your current one. This is particularly useful in Cyberpunk 2077 and now Phantom Liberty, as the game has a number of different branching paths depending on what choices you make in the story. If you feel like you made a wrong choice, doing this will mean you can just revert back to one of those many saves that you've made and then replay it and choose an alternate option. What we did notice is that the good ending for the quest usually ends up with you getting a special type of iconic weapon. So while it doesn't apply every single time, if you've done a long quest and didn't get anything cool, you may have picked a wrong choice. Next up, if you're wondering what type of build you should play with the new skill tree options, well we suggest going for a build that revolves around using blades as these allow you to run around and destroy everything while having a bunch of fun. You can even deflect bullets back to enemies which do massive damage if you time it correctly, and you you can pick up the Sandevastan, the Blood Pump, or the Berserk Cyberware to make you even more survivable. So there's all of the tips that we have compiled together that we wish we knew earlier. Hopefully this helps you out, and if it did, make sure to comment down below your tips so that we can all learn together as a community. And check out these two videos on the screen now. We have loads of videos coming your way soon that you won't want to miss out on. So check these two videos out, and then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.